Hi, and welcome to the Fundamentals of Digital Painting. My name is Nas Peters, and in this video we are going to be painting hair. We will be relying on the line art and the shape it already has, as well as create a brush which will allow us to paint several hair strokes at a time, rather than painting them one by one. This will simplify the process. We are going to start off by making a new brush. Create a new layer, and then select the round hard edge brush. Size it down somewhere between 10 and 20. Pick the color black and focus on a blank spot on the canvas. Now paint small dots in a row. I decided to go with five, each a different size. Then, just like we did to create the other brushes, we want to hide the background layer and use the lasso tool to create a selection around these dots. Continue to turn it into a brush by going into Edit, Define Brush Preset. Title it if you want and then click OK. You can now unhide the background layer. We want to test out the new brush and see how the sittings react on the brush strokes. You'll notice the dots are scattered rather than linear shaped, so go into the brush settings to tweak this. If you were to uncheck the shape dynamics, it will create a linear trajectory, but you can still see the dotted shapes in these lines, so we need to tweak the settings so it smooths out. To do this, I select the shape dynamics again and tweak the angle jitter and roundness jitter to create the linear shape of the brush. Once that's done, I test the brush out again. There is still a bit of roundness, but we won't be using the brush at a large size as the one I have selected at the moment. So the dotted aspect will fade the smaller the brush size is. Erase the dots you made to create your brush from, or delete that layer and create a new one to paint the hair on. Zoom in on the top of the character's head and size down the dotted brush we just made. It can be quite small. I have mine at 12, large enough so you can see the shape of the brush, but not so big that the dotted aspect transfers into strokes. I select a black color and focus on the shaded areas. This brush will help thicken the hair, giving it the illusion of multiple layers and thinner strands of hair which pop out of the hairdo, making it look more natural. Because of the settings we applied on the brush, we don't need to lower the opacity or flow. Gently paint over the darkest areas, hiding the line art bit by bit so the red blends into the shadows rather than being cut off in the line art sections. You can use the same dotted brush on the eraser to remove strands that came out too thick. It's okay if it goes outside of the lines a bit. Once you're done, hide and unhide the layer to see the difference so far. If you find it too dark, lower the opacity on the layer just a bit so the red can become more visible underneath. Just make sure the shape doesn't rely on the line art as much as it did before. Clean up some of the messy areas if need be with the eraser and brush tools. Moving on to the next step. Create a new layer on top of the one we just finished. We're going to keep using the same brush, only changing the color. I'm going to be using a lighter and more vibrant red. If you happen to have used a different color for the hair, simply use a lighter and more vibrant color than the one you have the hair as. For this, we do want to lower the opacity on the brush as we want the shading nuances to be visible underneath our painting. I lowered the opacity on the brush to 70%. Now, just like we did with the black, we want to paint some strokes over the lightest areas in the hair, filling it out a bit and giving the shape more volume. We will be using a blending mode on this layer, so don't worry if you happen to cover dark areas. Once done, change the blending mode to either Overlay, Soft Light, or Color Dodge. I personally went with Overlay. But those three modes will complement the highlights, although Color Dodge may come out quite harshly. I actually lower the opacity on the layer to 80% as I find Overlay to be a bit too flashy as well. Now repeat this exact same process, only with an even lighter color. For red, I will be using a very light pink. You also want to make the brush size smaller, as this will act as the thinner strands that are highlighted across the hair. Make sure to create a new layer for this. As you can see, I avoided painting strands on the side of her hair which has most shadow, only covering the areas which contain most light. For this layer's blending mode, you do want to opt for color dodge. It'll help make those strands pop out from the rest of the colors. If it's too vibrant, lower the opacity on the layer just a bit. Now if you place all the hair layers into its own folder, you can hide and unhide it to see the difference from before and after real quick. The hair now holds more contrast, looks a bit thicker, and the colors flow through the strands. You can continue adding to the hair, adding more layers with a dotted brush, or using the round hard edge brush at a very low size to add very small individual strands of hair, to give it a more threaded aspect. 
You won't be able to notice these very much unless you were to look at the illustration zoomed in, but adding details is a lot of fun. You could call it complete or add some different color shades to the hair. For this, we will use one of the custom cloud brushes we made. It can be relatively big size as it's like smudging colors onto the hair rather than painting precisely. I decide to go for a very flashy purple with tints of blue in it and focus the paint smudges mostly on the contrasted areas. The opacity is set pretty low on the brush so the brush strokes aren't as hard edged. Once done, tweak the blending mode on the layer and change the opacity if need be. And that's it, we are done with the hair. In the next video, we are going to start painting different textures starting off with fabrics. Thanks for listening!